cash flows from Golden Grove were negative 12 million this quarter. From Capricorn Copper, they were negative 37 million. So they had another 13 million that went out the door to, to service debt. Despite drawing 61 million, their cash balance dwindled from 163 down to 127. Before the debt drawdown, it would have been a $100 million negative cash flow for the quarter. But the big thing that grabs your eye is that cash balance, right? 3.34 billion. And that's because they added a whopping 656 million cash to that balance sheet. Keep in mind when Pilbara acquired Altura less than three years ago, the pro forma market cap was only 2.1 billion. Money Miners Tuesday. Oh, I forgot already, JD. 25th of Thank July. You. Welcome to the show. JD Ricciardo tra has known as Travis. Gentlemen. How you going, Matty? Good. What's going on? Mr. Matthew Michael. How are we, mate? Mate, I'm very good. Very good. Boys. We're into quarterlies, aren't we? We're into quarterlies. Coming thick and fast. Mm, right. Let's, before we get into it, we have got a partner. Hey. We've hit the bloody big time. A partner? Mate, any I, thought, time, I thought you were married. Anytime <laughs> exploration services is my new marriage with money of mine. <laughs> New partner of the show, our first inaugural one, anytime exploration. Exploration, contractor recruitment, equipment hire, core storage, core cutting. Mate, they do it all. Drilling, contract consultation, vehicle hire, soil sampling. Give old Seamus Murphy a bloody call. Anytimeexplorationservices.com. Chuck all the links in the show notes. Thanks for your support and money of mine. Anytime exploration. Might even wear a hat for him. Hey. What about a Roo hat, mate? No, you can't yeah, replace that. Maybe we could maybe we could get company badges on here. Could, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be the go. We could frame the Hooteroo hat, and I think it might sell for some some a bit of money, mm, a bit, right. bit of memorabilia. How, before we get into it, housekeeping, buddy. We get on YouTube, everyone. Get us up to three thousand subscribers. We're just below, and we won't need your help. But just look, if you're not subscribed, get on there already, and mm. make sure you subscribe to both the Facebook Money Miners group. And the Hooteroo chat. The group and, chat. And the Hooteroo Herald, our weekly yep. weekend newsletter that JD does a sensational job on. All the links are in the show notes, yeah. money miners. Get involved in them all. It's all happening. Because we've got over a 1,000 uh, people signed up to the Hooteroo Herald and we've got over or nearly 500 people in the Hooteroo group chat. And a couple of rip-snorting episodes I'd recommend the Money Miners go back and listen to last week. If you haven't, the Rick Rule chat absolutely went off its tits on the downloads. Uh, nothing like a good Rick Rule effect. And our chat with the big part one with the Wailu fellas. So, mm -hmm. Joel and Luca. So Got to hold suspense for part two. Yeah. Head, 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 just have a listen to how they spend Twiggy's money. So, boys. Let's get right into it. Should we give a run through of what we're going to talk about today, mate? Of course, JD. Take so, it away. Our good friends of the show, Sayona, get a mention right up the front. And then we've got a, a couple of interesting ones. So Pilbara came out yesterday with a quarterly. We'll give that one a run through. And as well, we're going to sort of bundle together a few companies in a similar sort of shape, I guess. So that includes Panoramic, 29 Medals. Galena. Galena and... Maybe Orabanda. Maybe Orabanda. We'll give them a shout. And then we'll wrap up with a bit of news from Encounter in the fabled West Arunta. So let's get into it. Trav, say owner. Oh, friends of the show, JD. Yep, they sure are. Our dear, dear friends. I think we've covered it... Uh, more than more than uh more than it was newsworthy. The uh, approval of 10, ten million free shares at the uh um by shareholders that was put put forward. There was a, a notice of meeting that went out. So the MD um you know was basically uh believing he should be paid ten million shares for free for prior services, along with another executive director there, um, who was instead of getting shares that he was getting oppies. And so today there was a um a, a change of director's interest notice that went up on the platform. And I opened it and you were like, oh, it's probably just, you know, the fact that these new securities have been issued. And I'm always just checking to see if there's any, any directors selling shares, JD, because yep. that's what we're interested in. Uh, and sure enough, the uh, executive director who just two days after being, you know, awarded 10 million free options, sells 10 million shares on market. Um, it, it, it's funny, right? Because it was the same executive director whose name's, Paul Crawford, and he was also CFO of Sayona. And when Sayona surprised the market with that big, chunky $200 million capital raising um, that you know no one really was expecting, at the bottom of that announcement, it said that Paul Crawford would be retiring as both CFO 
and executive director effective 30th of June. Well, it's now 25th of July and uh, he must still be a director because he's having to disclose the sale of shares. Yeah, it's an interesting one. You would have thought, you know, get out of that directorship and then sell the stock, but remains to be seen what, what he ends up doing in his in his role at the company. The covering letter said it was to – the sale of shares was to fund um, – that was, you know, being able to pay for oppies which are expiring later in the month. Uh, so, yeah, but it's just the optics are horrible um, because, you know, on the exact same day that they were sold, he also had to stump up cash to fund um, participation in the placement because that was also approved by shareholders. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, some, some out the door, some in the door and uh, anyway, it just looks bad. They're, you know, unrelated, but there are facilities that will lend you money against options which are in the money if you are to, you know – exercise than sell but how about we get into Pilbara yeah let's get into some more cash generating lithium stories instead of this one Pilbara minerals quarterly dropped yesterday boys Poor. three three and a bit billion dollars worth 3.3 billion dollars worth of cash on the balance sheet now yeah. phenomenal it keeps rising still printing cash, even though the they? lithium price they sold that was is reducing they're still making shit loads of money Yep. So the head, the headline numbers on this one, Matty, 162.8 thousand tons of spodumene concentrate, which was at a 5.3 percent grade. Um, so that's you know up 10 percent production on the uh, from the June quarter, well the June versus versus the March quarter. They produced it at a cash cost of uh, Aussie 628 dollars per ton FOB, and sold it at a realised price of US. 3,256 per tonne. I think because yep. it was in the US 4,000, I think, last quarter. So it's, the sale price has gone down significantly, yeah, but sa- still printing cash. 100%. Sales, sale price has come down, but that, you know, Aussie 630 just about cost, you know, in US to, to reflect what they're getting priced in when they sell it, it was 420. And the, you know. the big thing that grabs your eye and you mentioned it, Maddie, is that cash balance, right? $3.34 billion, and that's because they added a whopping $656 million cash to that balance sheet. Keep in mind, when Pilbara acquired Altura less than three years ago, the pro forma market cap was only $2.1 billion, and now they've got way more than that in cash alone. I think it just poses the question, what are they going to do with all that cash? You're not going to say what I think. You're not going to mention those three letters, are you? Uh, the three letters? No, no, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But I did see a funny tweet, which um, uh, Dwayne Sparks, he posted a poll on Twitter saying, what is PLS going to do with all that cash? And he gives three options. WA takeover, Canadian company takeover, give it to me, the third option. Uh, <laughs> I, I, they're very funny. Um, I shouldn't give it to me, it just means dividends. Uh, but my favourite my favorite. Um, Part of this tweet was actually the comment from James Mooney, who said, uh, "PLS thirteen billion dollar market cap, three point three billion dollar cash should start buying Whitehaven coal stock, six billion dollar market cap, two point six billion dollar cash." So how funny would that be, right? <laughs> Lithium company starts buying coal stock. God, they could just start make, have their make their own bank <laughs> with this much bloody cash. <laughs> Fuck, that would be the quickest way to alienate their entire register that I've ever seen a company do. Yeah. There's right. another sort of bit that they beat around the bush in or they almost say it quite up front actually in in the announcement is going downstream so they they mentioned in the announcement they got 300,000 tons of unallocated uh, spodumene concentrate at they're looking to partner with someone so it remains to be seen they've got the the POSCO partnership as well that which is you know uh, coming along so I'm sure we'll see some of that at least spent on a bit more value capture downstream capability. Do you think they're going to take want to take the risk to go downstream print like it's obviously a, running a like a very smooth well-oiled wheel yeah, at the are. moment they've, they've told everyone they, they yeah. want to do yeah. that yeah, yeah. They've, absolutely. Already, they've already done it with yeah. posco That's yeah they're running a pro- partnering process um yeah it's 100 percent happening yeah and, and, but they wouldn't they're definitely not looking to do it in australia mate or do we don't know mate i i think watch this space yeah um so the stock's up six percent today compare that right with core lithium which after coming off 17% yesterday is down another 11% today. So there's a real flight for quality in the uh, lithium producer space there. Well, they're bro- broken through the old technical bugs would be loving it because it's broken through the support <laughs> line. Are they the 15th most shorted stock on, the, on the entire exchange? So 6.2% of all shares on issue have been shorted. That's, that's pretty hefty. Yep. Yeah, well, I think it was um, it was number ten yesterday when I looked. It must have gone down to fifteenth today. Yeah, right. Mm. Less. 
Yeah, um, right. And we're going to Pilgangura next week. Oh, yeah. Anyone's uh, – go, we're mixing it with the finance and the – I guess this reserve grade media companies, we're bringing the first grade element to it. So looking sure forward are. to it. Heading up to site visit. Got to go pick up the high vis, the Savi. Got money of mine logos embroidered on. We're good to go. Love it. Right now, geez, we're doing a bit of a topsy turvy sort of thing. We're going low to high, back to low. Panoramic R capital raising. Oh. We thought, as I said, Trav. Jonas, you thought – JD, sorry, what do I call you yeah. Jonas for? Sorry, mate. Um, that was weird. You thought they were going to award, maybe squeeze through. It was yet to be determined, but they are in a trading hole pending a capital raise. They are. Let's introduce the whole know, thing, Matty. We don't know the amount or the figure yet, do we? Has anyone seen the term sheet? Rum, rumours are $40 million, but not confirmed yet. So I think this, this theme that we want to speak to, though – uh, and there's a bunch of companies, there's quarterlies and announcements, but the, the theme across them all – is, is the, you know, combining operating leverage with financial leverage. These are companies that, you know, are mining or um, or trying to mine successfully and they've got a lot of debt and they're also, you know, a high-cost producer. Mm. Let's start from the top, Panoramic. So we covered them uh, starting beginning of June with the filter press issue, the f- famous filter press saga. And that looked like it could drag on and we sort of hinted at a potential capital raising at the time. But then they ended up fixing it pretty pretty quickly, like much quicker than we kind of suspected. So we look, thought, you know, maybe they've got through to the other end and they won't have to capital raise. But today, bang, they're in a trading halt. They're capital raising. Like we just touched on, rumours are $40 million. We haven't seen the term sheet. but No, yeah. we haven't. So they last traded at 9.2 cents. So you'd suspect something in the, in the sort of region around 8 cents. My first thought is, geez, IGO must really be counting their lucky stars that they didn't end up wrapping these guys up a couple of years back now. So they are still on the register for, I think we spoke about it last week, Matty, for 20% um, of, of the yeah, shares 21. on issue. Yeah, that's right. So it'd be interesting to see whether they, they chip in at all for this, ra- uh, for this raise. And just to sort of comment on the the broader market dynamic, Nickel is it's in a pretty tough spot. We've, we're speaking about it every single week, so it's not a great time. It's a pretty to raise. bearish commentary out from um, yeah, Macquarie today in relation to an oversupply of Nickel coming on and a huge amount of the um, the the class two being converted to, to class one and, and the effect that's going to have. So yeah, it's it'd quite be interesting to see if Zeta participate as well. We talked about them with Horizon yep. Gold and they they were the blocking stake for against IGA. So it'd be interesting to see if they yeah. participate in it as well. Yeah, thirteen percent holders in in Panoramic. So now onto twenty nine metals. So their quarterly came out and we'll just skim through what stood out to us. So first up, C one costs those direct mining costs, US. $4.46 per pound of copper. So the copper price is floating around three eighty, dollars 80 And that's and that, just for Golden Grove. Yeah, yeah. Capricorn's yeah. Not, not producing not anything. Producing. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that is pretty rough. So the company, over, over doubled from the last quarter, that C1 cost. Yeah. And the company pointed to stockpile movements and lower byproduct credit contributions. So that's when the what they produce in terms of zinc and other metals, the revenue they get, they mark – against their C1 costs. So that, yeah, wasn't really working in their favour at all. They also drew down US $40 million in a debt facility over the quarter. And something else we're really looking for is whether they're going to get money and how much money they're going to get from insurers. So 29M will be very keenly sort of awaiting that money and I'm sure they'd want it sooner rather than later. Another thing they flagged was that they uh, had received some covenant relief from lenders throughout the quarter. So that sort of hints that, you know, they've got debt and they need to they need to pay it back and they're getting a bit of leeway from their lenders given the extreme weather event we saw at Capricorn mm. Copper. And you you had a look at, you know, the operating performance by asset, right? Because Maddie's gone on ad finitum about the challenges there at Capricorn that that have, you know, come about via the water, but you've also got Golden Grove there and maybe maybe some optimists were thinking Golden Grove could could um help them get through a rough period yeah i mean some some headlines you read uh that golden grove is sort of you know taking the operational burden and seeing them through but you know the cash flows from golden grove were negative 12 million this quarter from capricorn copper they were negative 37 million so despite you know drawing in aussie dollar terms 61 million their cash balance dwindled from 163 down to 127 at the end of june so that another thirteen million that went out the door to to service debt. So it's not and, a great position to be in. It comes back to that whole thing we've talked about: is that zinc is 
halved over that, I think it was the previous 12 months. Copper is down. So they're really getting hampered by those lower prices as well. Yeah. So, so before the debt drawdown, it would have been a $100 million, you know, negative cash flow for the quarter. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Not, not great. Wow. Uh, yeah, I also um, – I noticed that they say there's a – a final settlement of stamp duty payable to the WA Office of State Revenue for the acquisition of Golden Grove. That's still outstanding. And they flagged 26 million bucks for that. Um, I'll look at that, you know, cash flow waterfall and the amount of issues we've talked about and the, the degree of uncertainty around Capricorn. And we know it's going to take a long time to fix there. My takeaway is um, we, we kind of eased a bit on Panoramic when it looked like they, they fixed the filter press, but I'm holding my guns on this one, mate. Uh, my view is they're very likely to have to dig themselves out of balance sheet stress via equity raising. You know, the, the, the debt stress, the Capricorn dilemma, the negative cash at Golden Grove, it looks really, really ugly. And I'm not a believer that an insurance payout is going to bail out um, the equity holders here. Oh, they, this quarterly especially shows it, that Golden Grove was supposed to be your, your class as their flagship asset, the best performer, and it's burning cash this quarter. Yeah, 100%. In addition to Capricorn if it when it comes online in the second half of this year. So. Yeah, and, and it's going to require a lot of cash to go into the ground at Capricorn to turn that thing back on. So And a lot of time, like 100%. a lot of time to get it all going again. So then we've, got, thing. then we've got Galena, so G1As. Their quarterly was out yesterday as well. They've had a bit of a tough time ramping up the Abra Lead Silver project, so or now mine, which they 60% own and Toho owns the – the remainder. So they had to do a raise during the quarter to try and see them through. They reported that the, the April quarterly had a rainfall event, but then they were ramping up in May and June and they're expecting a well, they're expecting the first operating cash flow positive month in July. I'm not entirely convinced. I'd say we're not entirely convinced of the sustainability of this uh, I guess positive cash flow. I mean, for one thing, they haven't even started paying down or servicing the $165 million in debt that's going to start in 2024 that they have. So there was another thing that, which I don't, I don't love about how they reported. So they reported C1 and all in sustaining costs on a total basis. They didn't break it down on a per unit basis. You must be thinking, what's going on there? What are they hiding? That's, that's generally how I, how I think about a company that does something like that. Because you just want to be able to quickly compare what they got and what went out the door and want to kind of do it on a, on a per unit basis, whether that's a pound or a ton or whatever. And I think we were kind of right to be suspicious in, in Galena's case. They reported C1 and all in sustaining costs of 25.6 million and 32.3 million respectively. And if you translate them into a per ton produced basis, you get Aussie 3,030 for C1 costs and Aussie 3,890 per tonne for all in sustaining costs. And just to relate that to what the lead price is, the lead price is currently in Aussie dollar terms at 3,230. Wow. So, yeah, mm. not, not making a lot of money. But then they're, they've obviously got – then you add in the buy credit, buy product credits for the silver. No, that, that, it, that already incorporates it. The, mm. the lead price – for that lead price but mm. – the lead price is the lead price on its own, yeah. but the C1 cost that you see there you net off has the factored product. in the money that they've made from the silver against that. So yeah. that's that's after you've made you know X amount on silver and you subtracted it from that. I, I remember when we had uh, TJ come on our show and um, this was when they just executed the equity raise. We asked some rel relatively you know hard questions and you know, he, I think he ag agreed with our sentiment that everything needs to go right from here. And that was a couple of months ago. And this is the first real announcement we've had since they raised money. So I wanted to, to track a couple of operating metrics. And when they raised money, they came out with guidance for calendar year 2023, saying that they produce at a grade of between 6 and 7% uh, lead. In the March quarter... It was 4.8%. The June quarter was 5.4%. Um, so, you know, that's an average of 5.1%. It's going to be, you know, a massive uplift required to, to get that average grade to between 6 and 7% in the remaining two quarters um, of the year. Yeah, they did, they did say they were expecting, even I think in the quarterly today, that, that grade to come up and, you know, we'll be, we'll be holding them to that. So if you look at the quarterly and see what the cash position did, 
start the quarter with 20.6 million, end the quarter with 19.3 million. So, you know, you've gone down $1.3 million. But in that quarter, they'd raised or they'd received from raising $18.7 million. Yeah. And the, the scary bit is the debt, all right? It's $166 million in debt to Taurus there. And those repayments kick in in six months' time, or repayments on the principal, that is. Um, so, yeah. I mean, like they're going to – I think that they need – their lender to be flexible with them, give them some flexibility. Um, if if the you know if the equity to sort of um, keep 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 things going another day, that's my my general feel of things. You can, you can never be too sure that that's going to happen, right? But yeah, looks but tough. If they, if they have pretty much if they have another quarter like this, if Q one this year is the same as Q four that we've just come out of, they'll have pretty much zero dollars. <laughs> Because the raising, yeah. so they're pretty much what they they raised eighteen point seven and still went down. So they lost what they lose nineteen. Tw- they lost twenty million from operations. Yeah, that's right. They lost. So 20 if they million. lose twenty million again, they're going to be out of cash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, given they, they to give them the benefit of the doubt, they are in that that ramp up phase. So you would expect operations to to improve, but you know operations have to improve. Yeah, and and you heard it in the sentiment we had like with with um tj there was a lot of talk about learning we're learning lots about the ore body right it's the kind of phase where you don't have time to learn anymore because you got to pay back your debt you don't have the money to learn (laughs) yeah exactly you don't have the money you don't have the cash but um you know unfortunately they're enduring a lot of this learning now because they had to spend a lot of money to get close to that ore body so what's that going to look like if they've already had that raise that we was not a not a good thing. Yeah. Imagine if they have to tap the market again and couple that with the hundred and sixty six million dollars of debt to Taurus. Yeah, it looks ugly. I, I I remember um I remember TJ kind of alluding to to if things went that way. He sort of alluded to corporate alternatives and highlighted the strategic importance of um, the ore to Toho smelter. So I think he was alluding to Toho, even though things got dire, Toho might take us out. Um I'd be struggling to believe that Toho um, is going to, you know, be um, be sympathetic to equity holders. They just buy it out of administration potentially, you know, at a cheaper price. Right. Common themes for these, Trav. You can pretty much uh, bundle them all together and we'll even add a bit of a comment for Orobanda as well because their quarterly come out as well. Yeah, let's put it in. How do you uh, how do you tie it all together? There's some pretty similar themes here. I reckon, Maddie, Maddie touch on what you saw at Orobanda first and then we can sort of tie them all. all. Yeah, so Or Orobanda, they've got the – what used to be the Eastern Goldfields. We've seen that saga that went into administration the day, in the Davy Hurst uh, – the Davy Hurst mine. So, look, they lost $13.8 million this quarter on their operations. They've lost $33 million on operations for the year, but their cash position has improved because they raised – 30 million bucks, but that was to develop the Riverina underground mine. That was for the use of funds. But look, they've also, they're still producing from their open pits. They've still got their mill on and it's running at $3,000 an ounce all in sustaining costs. And JD, you talked about it the other day, all in sustaining cost isn't the full piece of the pie. There's still a couple of slices left once you actually go up into the, the corporate all in costs. It's well above that. So Look, yeah, overall their operation at the moment is losing money for what they're producing. Should have they turned the mill off while they were developing if you're still losing money? Hindsight's 2020, isn't it? Hindsight's 2020. Tying them all together, I mean, less so with Orobanda, but more with Panoramic, 29M and G1A, you've got companies that are leveraged and highly leveraged in, in some cases – They've got, you know, razor thin sort of margins. Like you sort of said regarding Tony James, the MD of Galena's comments, they need a lot of things to go right. Mm-hmm. So it's Or Ben is the only one that doesn't have debt there. Yeah. And they're un, they're unhedged, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because their realized yeah. price was uh twenty nine forty or something. Yeah. So yeah, but they do have that benefit. Yeah. But yeah. there is that one percent royalty that goes out yep. for them to Hawks Point. Yep. Yeah. So for per- for perpetuity. Another thing these companies have pointed to is the weather. So the weather is something that hasn't gone in favour of 29 medals. In Galena's case as well, they pointed to 
April weather events, you know, um, Panoramic is, is in the Kimberley. They're going to experience weather events. So these are the types of things that can work against them and it can just take something like that to put a company in a very difficult position. And, you know, one uh, option on the table, which Panoramic have exercised today, is having to do a capital raise, which is obviously dilutive and can be very dilutive to existing shareholders to try and see them through to the other side to when they supposedly see costs come down, they can operate at a uh, profitable level. But I mean, other things that can go wrong, you know, you can have cost inflation, which we've seen, which has been working against these guys. You can have commodity prices not go in your favor for a while. So you really do need quite a few things to to line up well to get to the other side. And I suppose a bit of, uh, bit of info I've got about what the industry is costing at the moment to operate. Talking to someone yesterday, like a good Rule of thumb before was about seven to eight thousand dollars a meter for like jumbo development, like for a decline. If you're going to put in like an expiration decline or or your main capital decline, that is now in the industry getting quoted at around twelve thousand dollars a meter. So that's where the costs are sitting against these. So a lot of these operations all have mining contractors in there doing the development. So when they're developing these mines, it is wow. it is costing more. So that's a big. That's a massive. Yep. dollar to chuck on Inter- top. To Interestingly, lot. on on costs, we did see, you know, during this quarterly season, we have seen a couple of companies, Northern Star, Rio Tinto sort of come to mind that have kind of observed prices stabilising. So it's early, early days on that front, but potentially seeing a sort of plateau in, in prices as, you know, inflation potentially comes ac- off across the board. So I'm sure all the miners will have their fingers crossed for, for more of that. Mm. Does moderating just mean they're going up at a slower rate and it's still going up? <laughs> well, s- stabilizing was the word, so that yeah. would sort of imply to me that not going up, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, Encounter. Niobium. They encountered some Niobium oh. in their drill holes. Matty, the hits keep on coming oh, from you. Oh, God, the West Arunta, the new golden mile. That's <laughs> it. It's so. the Niobium gold fields up there, mate. Oh, so e is a bit of a WA1 neurology play at as it stands at the moment. They announced results from just two holes. They were drilled 1.5 kilometres apart. Now, these specific ones were targeting something that sits roughly 10 or so, a bit more than 10 k's away from WA1's Looney Discovery. And so they intersected carbonatites and both RC pre-collars ended in Niobian and rare earth, so a good sign. One of the holes hit 34 metres at 1% Niobian pentoxide as well as 0.6% trio from 56 metres and the other hit 2 metres at 1.2% Niobian pentoxide from 67 metres down. So, Mate, you, you sound like a geo. <laughs> Just rolling off the cuff. <laughs> so both holes have only had assays for that that first bit, that RC pre-collars, and they're waiting on the assays for the, the diamond tails at the bottom there. And they've also done another six diamond holes, which we're expecting assays from this quarter. They also announced an 80 to 100 hole RC drilling program and that'll commence in August. So they did a, a raise a couple months back now, so they, they cashed up. They got a bit of a, um, a grant from the government too so oh that was to, to drill the diamond hole exactly yeah yeah. yeah yeah so all up not not a bad announcement you know they've they've realized niobium in some of these carbonatites something um when we had bogan and emmanuel dat emmanuel dat on for the Daddy. wa1 episode they they touched on that obviously not all carbonatites are hosting anything anything flash but they so, are, are rare there's only 600 carbonatites mapped yeah so an extremely low percentage of them contain niobium. Yep. Yeah, so they've, they've got hints of niobium and you can just look at a, their presentation. They've got multiple targets that they're sort of looking into. I think it's interesting to compare WA1 with Encounter and specifically on a market cap basis. So WA1, 230 million, Encounter, 190 million. You know, I'm not entirely sure what, what the to draw from this, but it does seem to me that WA1 has a slightly better grasp on their discovery at the moment and there's there's just that potential across Encounter because they've got all these things, you know, glowing from the the various studies that they've done and opportunities and the cash to to try and hit them and obviously both companies have plenty of news flow to come so we'll have to sort of 
wait and see how that looks in the coming months. I suppose we saw the other week with uh, Voltage Strategic Resources and their neurology play to Delta Lithium's Yinathera, how it can go the other way if yeah. it doesn't come through. Good case study so, by you, that one, Maddie. Yeah. Also Pleasure doing business with you, boys. <laughs> also on this one, WA1's share price is up more than Encounters is up today. So 10% <laughs> up for WA1. <laughs> yeah. So and On no news, that is. So it's, that's, it's fascinating, I think. Um, You've compared WA1 with Encounter and ding, ding, ding. Uh, we own some WA1. Yep. Um, and Emmanuel Dat, he compared the two today. He tweeted, I saw, he says one hour ago, he's retweeted um, a prior tweet and he goes, what a real discovery looks like, winky face. And he's uh, retweeted WA1's discovery holes back in, well, some of their results back on the 5th of June. <laughs> Very funny. But I think it's good news. A biased opinion. But yeah, a biased opinion talking his book. But um. But you got carbonatites and that's good news, right? Those they're rich in minerals. So um, I mean, yeah, it's like it's just exciting for what the um, exploration potential could be in a region of WA that's really, really untapped. Definitely. So our encounters still open to look if the Niobium doesn't come in through, but other uh, trio elements for their deposit. So I'm sure they'd be looking at everything they can, right? Yeah. This is outside of my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, just trying to figure out correlate the. Uh, after the big rise of WA1 and uh, Encounter, only 40 million bucks less in market cap. Pretty bloody close. Yeah, definitely. Very interesting. Bit of, oh. bit of unit bias maybe, mate. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the, the punters look at a share price, not a, not a market cap. Mm. God, it was a bit of a negative episode today, wasn't it, besides the Pilbara quarterly? Pilbara, mate. Uh, yeah, Pil like, Pil all the bloody shitloads of cash that Pilbara made has offset it, how much every other company is losing on their operations. So oh, the guys we've so come right, out huh? on a pretty balanced level for the, today's episode, boys, I reckon. That's it. All right, boys. Good stuff. Cracker. Short and crisp, JD. Just how you like it, Cobber. Taking on Aaron Collar and feedback. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback too, Aaron. Now, he is a friend of the show. Genuine. <laughs> Genuine friend. Right. Let's hoo hoodaroo, lads. Thanks to our partners. Our partners at Anytime Exploration Services. Check them out. That's it. Link Cheers, in guys. the show notes. Hoodaroo. Hoodaroo, lads. Hoodaroo. The information contained in this episode of Money of Mine is of general nature only and does not take into account the objectives, financial situation or needs of any particular person. Before making any investment decision, you should consult with your financial advisor and consider how appropriate the advice is to your objectives, financial situation and needs.